This is the I Know Podcast, where we're all about healthy debate, honest conversation, and talking bare junk. Information, knowledge, observation. This is the I Know Podcast. I N O Information, Knowledge, Observation. Also, I know nothing. We got Malik Coffee in the Yo. building. We got Moz. Hey. We got Ashley. That outside, but gonna listen. <laughs> she uh, draws sleep. <laughs> 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 she brought support. Uh, my name is Marcus Myers. Um, Rome is not here again, but you know, here in spirit. Oh my god, I'm so tired of saying that. Be get here, be. Honestly, At this right? point, we give you too much. Honestly, right? <laughs> Honestly, right? Why are you not here? Paper. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you put a cardboard cut out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way. Your mic is so far away. Yo, yeah. we haven't recorded in a yeah, minute. Yeah, yeah, in yeah, yeah, a yeah. minute. I was wondering about that one. Like, I don't want to say anything before this process again. All right, can you put this? There? You know what's really, really funny? It's usually like the twenty-fifth minute that we play. Like really like <laughs> right. Today we have a very special guest, yes. right? <laughs> a very special guest with all these technical difficulties. This, right. this is so disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the amount of technical difficulties. Anyway. You have a very special guest. Um, people just ask me all the time, right? Like, how do you get on the I Know podcast, right? Like, do you have to be somebody? No, you got to be somebody thing. Do we have to know you? And the answer is, I don't really know how we people get on the show. I'll be honest with you. I don't this, is, fast, this, is exa- this is exactly how this happened. Kofi was talking to somebody right. at some point in time. Yes. I even know where he was. He messaged in the chat. This body seemed cool. I got an interesting story. <laughs> Anyone call me show? He names that. He's giving me a number. And I was like, all right. I don't. I didn't meet him. I didn't know who it was. Nothing. It's only when he showed up. I was like, oh, wait, I know you from primary school. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Nepotism. Right, right, right. It's, it's right. just too small. That's all it is. Right, exactly. <laughs> but, um, but one of the main things that stood out to me from what Kofi was saying is that Zach was addicted to cocaine. And it's something that we covered before. Um, and I would like us to really explore it a bit more. Um, I'm going to go through the whole story, amongst other things. Welcome to the show, Zach, people. Yay. Hey! All right. What are, you, what are you saying, first of all? Okay, now. That was a lot of information to draw all at first. I thought we were going <laughs> to ease me in nah, one second. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> like, you know, you can say, like, okay, well, this is that. Is that does X, Y, Z. Yeah, that's what I was and expecting. Then. And, then, and then we get here. It's like, Wait, oh, has he seen this show? We get, we're going right to the meat of it. <laughs> but, okay, but let's start with the bio, right? Because I actually don't even know what you do. Okay, your name is Zach. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, head up. How, how, do, how, would you, how would you introduce yourself? I am a Twitch streamer, affiliate now. That means I get Next some week. ad revenue from doing that. Nice. Not a lot, because not like a partner. They get bigger percentage. But I still get a little, a little three cents for every ad view. That, so the more viewers, and that is the Ludi Loco. That's the name I go by. I help organize video game tournaments down here. I part with some other gamers down here. We do it at Aeon and Anime Con. And that's mostly what I do in my pastime. And my work life is just boring. So I'm not going to get into that now that I think about it. So. I read it, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I read it, too. Especially after that intro. Yeah. <laughs> that's, so much, that's so much cooler than whatever it is you do for work, though. Yeah, me. Yeah, same. And I totally understand that. I resonate with that. Um, all right. Well, well, yeah. Okay, so so let's get into it. Um, the main reason why you're here. Uh, you, so, Kofi said you were you were addicted at the time. Uh, and I want us to explore that now, if you don't mind. Okay. So can, can you take us back to that thing? I'm trying to remember. Let's see. Because I told Kofi this while I was drinking, so I didn't remember telling him most of it <laughs> as well. So then when he reached out to me again, I was like, oh, right. We had this conversation. So now to come here again. Yeah. Because back, I have stopped my nose in my, no pun intended. <laughs> that, <laughs> in many mm, things. That was rich. <laughs> <during my life. laughs> that was great. Like, <laughs> Sorry. That was... <laughs> I love that. Hey, you're the fans. I'll stop my nose in many things too, but <laughs> different things probably. I, must say. I mean, it might hey, be the yo. same. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> what killing me, right, Marcus? It was the night. Marcus, like, well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was that was one of the best on the jokes I think I've ever heard. <laughs> Right, but yeah, okay, yeah. so right. I would say, yeah, I've spent a lot of my younger years trying to fight, figure out what exactly the fuck I want to do. Right. So, I mean, I went to, after high, St. Michael's here, I went to high school in Canada, and I think that's where all, most of the problems started. 
because I never had such freedom. Mm. I know because even just from the simple things like pick, being able to be more flexible with school subjects here, you pick your subjects here in third form, you're stuck with that. That's up the rest there, of your life. <laughs> up there is just like you were so flexible of what you could do. I could do anthropo. I did a whole different array of subjects that I ever got to do here. So just from the little freedoms I was given like that, mm-hmm. and then I went, oh, that's just the beginning. Then you go start going and get introduced to alcohol because I used to never drink before when I was here in Barbados and then started that in Canada with my friends because honestly when you're in Canada what else do you do during winter you smoke you drink mm-hmm. that's why I started smoking cigarettes I cigarettes is I would say it's probably still my biggest struggle up to today really yeah because nicotine is a hell of a thing well but would you say that these, they, that they these say cigarettes cocaine. All right, don't worry would you say that these, that these cigarettes were like a gateway into all the other things I it definitely did not help Right. Yeah, I would. It's also to clarify, I'm also diagnosed with OCD, so I'm not just a person who says, "Oh, I'm so OCD." It's, 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 like OCD is a whole actual disorder that right. people don't actually understand because we know it for social media or just people posting. Yeah, I'm so OCD. It's just like they think it's just organized. They suddenly just got a fridge that look good. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're just tidy. Okay, you're tidy. Yeah. Yeah. They're tidy. Right. Which is uh, OCD, if you don't know, is obsessive compulsive disorder. So it makes it's. Part uh, one symptom can be it's a lot harder to break mm. habits. You get obsessed with things, as it says. So that's just like you can hyper focus on things. It can be good or bad. Like I like to like if you're a subject, I'm really interested. I'll hyper focus on it, but also can be bad, as in you get addicted to things really easy because you just want again and again and again and again. So it has its good and its bad days, but it can be mostly bad. <laughs> really have to learn how to manage it. Since then, I've definitely got better of managing, but I still have my bad days mm-hmm. with it. But I am also to put out there, I'm actually a very messy person. So <laughs> let's just get that out the way as well. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just anything, any sort of days. I got diagnosed when I was 13, so I've always tried oh, to avoid. Okay. Mm. Okay. But then you just get introduced to it with all the amount of freedom I had. I got cigarettes, the alcohol. So, like, you had an idea is not necessarily the best idea to start these things. So, I mean, like, mainly the cigarettes I mean, is what you mean. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I would never tell anybody to start smoking. Uh, just, like, drinking, that's a whole different story. You you just got to learn how to be responsible of it. Because I mean, there's nothing wrong with drinking. It's just, it's what you do while you're drinking. <laughs> you see? Okay, you said there's nothing wrong with drinking, but do you think there's something wrong with smoking cigarettes? There's... I, I, I also don't, I think, I would tell you the feel, it makes me feel good, but there's just real, really just nothing. Like drinking, socializing, that doesn't, that doesn't affect anyone else but smoking. That's cigarettes, smoking, blowing in the air. That's, that's how it affects others as well. Mm. I just don't think, cigarettes, never. Any other thing, weed. That's very interesting. I've weed, never heard someone or, talk about cigarettes like yeah. that. Weed or alcohol yeah. is whatever, but. Yeah. So something else that you said, um, i basically trying to understand Okay, so you know, like, you're aware that cigarettes aren't good. I mean, when you were, like, when you first moved to Canada. Yeah. And you're aware that, um, because you were aware you, were, you have OCD, you know that, okay, this isn't the best thing for Zach as a person. So how did it, like, what was that introduction like? But, like, I'm, I'm assuming a person didn't creep down an alley and was like, hey, kid. <laughs> In a trench coat. In a trench coat. <laughs> 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 Right. I had to hide the horns. Right, right. It was Lucifer all along. Yeah. Hey, Slick. <laughs> I wish I could properly remember. I think I was just with a friend. They had a bad day. They had cigarettes. I was smelling. I was like, hey, try one. Stupid me said that. Why? Would I ever say? I was just trying to be supportive. <laughs> Why? But I I think that's just how I started. But I, I just always say in my head, I know this is bad. What are you doing? I'm still doing it. It's just very hard to stop once mm. you started yeah so so what so you would say that one of the main things was the culture and the peer pressure that got you into all this i definitely think so because i was just trying i definitely knew no one in the school because this was a school and the nun i was the first Bajan to ever go to this school Sick. so <laughs> i just tried, tried to see where i could find my place at the school so i was doing whatever and what were you studying it was high school so it was just everything everything whatever okay, yeah because okay. they don't that would be the equivalent for us for sixth form. Right. Where I was doing 11th and 12th grade. So it was just nothing in particular. I did anthropology. I did physics. I did photography. Right. Oh, like anything. Man, <laughs> <says> photography. <laughs> I, 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 can, you, I, can you describe the P 
people at the school were they white? I just want to say white. Were they white people? Oh, they there was white? actually a smaller percentage of white people than most schools because ours was a tiny, tiny private school. They literally went from kindergarten up to twelfth grade and had like four hundred students. So this was a tiny school. What? Wait, wait. Kindergarten to so which is like reception to sixth form. Four hundred students in all. Yes. Correct. About, that is crazy. Well, We've got four hundred students in the year, <laughs> and it was in like a five-story, six-story building. What? <laughs> Sorry, that's fascinating to me. All right, though. so we go. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. I have to reset my. Right, right. my what I was imagining was very different before from what you're describing. Right. right. Before we get there, why did why did your you and your parents decide that on that school? Well, it was a religious school. So. Mm. That's <laughs> okay. That that puts things in perspective. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and what, what religion is it? That would be Baha'i. Ah, Baha'i. yeah. That's... I assume Catholic. That's my bad. Yeah. No, there was a Catholic school down the road, but. No. <laughs> We, it was Baha'i for us. Right. So that's what my family grew up as. I okay. have not practiced since I was 16. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's still something is observed, but I've definitely not been active at all. <laughs> uh, for everybody that doesn't know, uh, can you just give, can you give us like a chat GPT, like three sentences definition of Baha'i? You might just say condensed religion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, can, I, I can actually ask chat GPT if you want to. I was actually going to say, you're actually thing. the wrong person. That's <laughs> 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 why I tell people is Baha'i is just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We do things. I can, I can say you to Google. <laughs> let me let me ask, let me ask, let me do it now. Right, what Mark is doing right. that though? Um, I I I don't know if y'all had dare in school drug abuse resistance education. Oh, never for sure. in my life. I I, I, I had it here. Yeah, dare. It's in yeah, with the and B. I don't yeah. remember if it was at Michael's, but I remember it for St. Gabriel. Yeah, I definitely sure. had it at Wesley Hall. But you went. Um, but yeah, you I, went. yeah, I remember. I know it's that from school. Right. Yeah, and I don't remember no dare nothing. But like they always used to. Uh, the way that they would describe like being approached with drugs, it was by the man <laughs> in the trench coat. It was that. No, it's always your friends. Right. And they think like I hate to stop saying like as much as I do. I think people don't necessarily realize um I like spice. <laughs> <laughs> like. I don't think people realize the avenues that these roadways could come from. So like you so you'll be breezing or whatever. And like a man would just offer you like the most heinous thing in a casual way because to him is nothing. Like it's not it's not coming from a place of right. um malice or malicious. Yeah, I, right. I can destroy this boy now. <laughs> right. I got him still got his soul. They generally just want to share yeah, like, <laughs> what yeah. they're experiencing. Like yo, be <laughs> it's like <laughs> share, it's like sharing a YouTube link. Exactly. <laughs> no, it, that's exactly what it is. It's like I enjoyed this thing. This is something I enjoy. And I will let right. this that's what it's like. And you just gotta like really know yourself and I guess study like <laughs> this person's choices as well. When it comes to certain things, I remember um I got offered it's called a party pills here. I I, oh. I, I don't know what they are. I, they say Probably they're Molly or Molly. I right, they say things. they're Molly, but I don't I don't think nobody ain't got Molly and Barbie. It's like mm. proper. I'd be surprised. Proper. <laughs> well, uh, sorry. The, 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 <laughs> how to word this? Probably. I don't think proper Molly should be selling for the prices that. You These were people offered? were buying for. I didn't. I wasn't that thing. The front, 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 the point you're offering me for free. Mm -mm. Oh. <laughs> oh, right. So that's fun now. <laughs> so, so wait, so wait, so you, you like, where did somebody offer you Molly? Where? Yeah, like at parties or something. Yeah, yeah. There was, I, I, like, I, you only but, offer those at parties. It's very ca and the thing is very casual. Is like, like yo, but so you want? Huh? Uh? I saw out of it. Nah, me too. Molly here. Yeah. The, one definition the only thing yeah. that really surprised me was I heard about the raw students and meth. That was the one that genuinely surprised me. The medical, the medical because I'm like, where? <laughs> I'm, I'm just like, where are they making this? Yeah, because like in Barbados, you can generally tell. But I'm just like, but meth? They're like, are they really using like school labs for this or like wh where is this coming oh, from? They're making it in the meth lab. They're making out in school labs, right. medical labs. Like, like, that's why breaking bad, yeah. like <laughs> I was just generally shocked about meth. That was the one that surprised me when I heard the raw student at one point was in trouble for I think it was distributing or possession, one of them. Uh, yeah. But, I, but I anything else well. you could tell me, I would have zero surprise. Yeah. Okay, so this. so I found right, so I found I found the, the, the definition, right? Basically, um Baha'i is a monotheistic religion that originated in the 19th century of Persia. It emphasizes Iran. the oneness of oh it's, yeah, it's, Iran. A, it's Iran now I right. also don't know it <laughs> emphasizes the oneness of humanity the unity of all religions and the importance of collective efforts to bring about peace and justice that's all cool that's all like I said I do follow yeah. some principles it's that's just I don't nice. follow 
I don't go you to don't meetings. Work. I don't go to anything else. Like d- drinking is is against it. Um, sex before marriage. Like it's very Shh. traditional oh. things. Like I, I was I was there. I was very interested. Yeah, I was there. You <laughs> piece of justice on me, right? The piece of justice yeah. on me, good. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, un- unification, I bought yeah. that. Like I said, very good principles that follow. I was just not about the rules, but the principles. So. <laughs> I I agree. Okay, okay, okay. So it was a Baha'i. It was a Baha'i religious. Baha'i inspired school. School. In school, right? They made sure not to say it was Baha'i school. They said Baha'i inspired, inspired. to clarify. It. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, it still exists now. It's not in the same town I was in, but they moved right. to a different town, mm. but it's still around the school. Right. Okay. Okay. So so right. So you said uh, winter cigarettes. Um, <laughs> you would have been introduced to these things for any peer pressure, the culture. Uh, Freedoms. Uh, right. Uh, so how did you get into the harder things? Oh, like, it's, it's pretty much just what Kofi said. You're just, uh, well, what they call hanging out, or just guess for us, a uh, lime. They're just drinking, because that's what our thing was, because obviously we weren't allowed to be drinking, because the drinking age up there is 19, and they're quite strict about it. They'd be, I'd be dean you everything. So we always made that a big thing when we would get our little hangouts, go to somebody's house or one of the older students would rent a, a hotel room that we would go to. And then somebody there would just pull it out and then would offer it around. And that's just how it casually started each time. I just st- started off softer with like weed. And then it would go to, and sometimes as Molly or or cocaine, which is when, or yeah, just pretty much anything they could offer. I just stuck away from stuff with needles because I don't fuck with needles. Yeah, nah. Yeah, you got a line. You ain't even doing all that. I'm just I have like, a line. That just... <laughs> 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 okay. I'm just like... I, I'm sorry, that was... I don't just, know said that. It's just so much effort going into it. I would see them doing it. I'm just like, it just seems like so much effort. <laughs> right. Okay, you okay. You mean going into the date? Like effort going into oh, oh, I mean, it's I'm like oh, physical oh, effort. Right, right. right. You go get the right. belt, pop up the vein, and then they're there. Yeah, like, you know, like that generally like, calls my skin, though. Oh, they understand we so. I don't understand. Like, I, 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 watching it firsthand is a whole different experience too. Yeah, that's, that's nuts. <laughs> that is insane. Okay, yeah. so wait, sorry, I, I don't, I don't want to stay on here for so long. But you just, so you're saying that Leo would be like lame with some friends, and I'm out pull out a herring needle and a belt. Well, not right there. He would offer oh. it around first, and then probably he'll do it a little later when some people have left. It's not like right in front of everybody, but like, like not right in the middle of the. Peak of the part would be like things are winding down. It's like, I want to get back up, basically. Okay. Whoa, oh, say <laughs> that's the oh. method to get up. I don't know how um, these things affect the I, body. I don't either. I don't. I, but he said things were winding down. He wanted to get back somewhere. So I'm like, all right. <laughs> so, okay, so <clears throat> so the first time you tried cocaine, can you talk about when it happened and how it felt, etc.? It was somebody's birthday party. I remember. We were at one somebody's university friend's apartment. So, so this of is course, after the, um, the high school. No, no, no. This is a state, but somebody had a university okay, friend. Okay, okay. Like one of, I can't remember the exact relation, but anyway, we we're in their apartment, and things were just nice, just going usual, drinking, smoking weed. That's the standard in Canadian parties, and then well, house parties or whatever you want to call it when you're in a little apartment, and then some people were going taking turns going to the bathroom but they weren't actually using the bathroom because you know the work because the door is not, oh, not locking they're not flushing the toilet so and then they're, I was just asking yo what's going on <laughs> I say oh they're doing some lines if you want to you want to try I'm like my drunk ass was like sure mm. I could tell you it burnt like hell going when you're doing it they don't tell you about that when you first sniff it out because you're literally you don't want to put anything in your nose like you're yeah. literally destroying your nose doing that and it hurts but as soon as everything's a hill, it's just wow. There's a different type of feeling. It's immediate. immediate. It's immediate, like barely a few seconds at most. Because it's going, it's pretty much going right to your brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're, because <clears throat> you're no. I think it's something to about do how your nose connects to the sense of, to your brain. I don't know the science, but it, somebody was trying to explain to me one time. I was like, this man is drunk. That's <laughs> so I can't remember. But yeah, it's pretty much an immediate feeling, and then you're just cannot stop going you just have to be doing something like even like you just can't sit still like something has to be happening but but what but what exactly i mean <clears throat> can you talk about the pleasurable experience like, oh you're just you're just feeling on top of the world you're feeling like you can do anything as long as things happen you're just feeling very let's do this let's go. i'm down for anything i want to move i want to i'm just happy right now 
a friend of mine described it as you want to do everything all at once. Yeah, exactly. That's a that's a good way do to do all it. the things. You just pretty much you are you are a machine that has been fully oiled and cogged and ready to go, and you're just gonna go. What 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 is? Can you say anything that is like close to in terms of feeling? Hmm. That's the thing. You never really experience the same thing. That's why you keep wow. chasing after it. Right. You ever watched Limitless? Point, I guess. Okay. Because it's not like alcohol would make if you like you do get like you do get like if, if a feel of happiness alcohol, but euphoria. And but you can't really. But after a point, you can't really control yourself. Mm. Of cocaine, you're still fully functional. You can still just do everything. Like all your motor functions are still perfectly fine. You're just faster. <laughs> Sorry, so, okay, so the, <laughs> but that sounds like a highly that sounds like a drug that you could use from like a productivity standpoint. I mean, that's not like a tonic, <laughs> like I mean, a wellness tonic. I never got much done on it, but <laughs> 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 sorry, enough said. <laughs> if you feel like you can, but when you really look back, it's like wow, it wasn't really actually doing much. I was just, I wanted to do things. I was moving around, but. I don't know if I was actually actually accomplishing wow. much. Right. <laughs> okay, so let me ask you this, right? When people are on on alcohol, it changes their um, decision making process, yeah. right? They may do something because of the alcohol that would influence them. To, if they do something different from what they would do if they were sober, yeah. Does cocaine do that same thing? Like, does it influence you kind of to do things that you wouldn't usually do because you feel that like you're like on top of the world or whatever? Not to the same extent, no. I think the thing is that it's also mixed with other things, so it's also hard to say. Like you might mix it with your drinking, but it's not just something that. Well, for me, it was never something you just casually pull out during the day. But you know, you see like Wolf of Raw Street, you just see them casually going into meetings. Yeah. Like I never got to that sort of level. Right. I was just more like when I was already out. So it's a different. It's hard to say because it was mixed with alcohol generally. Mm -hmm. I only ever mixed with alcohol. I never. Because weed and I did it with weed once and alcohol, I cannot function. Like I wanted to move, but because you know how yeah, weed, weed is bring a you down, yeah. yeah. So and it's just like you're. I don't even. People took pictures that night. My eyes were like two different directions. <laughs> it's just like that was so. I would ever done it with alcohol. I've never been to the level where I'm just like I'm going to take this and I'm just going to go about my day. I never got to that level. I can say. But you are a social addict. Yes, I was always looking because I was going out very regularly back when I was younger as well, like four or five times a week. So, but it's not like I was going into work. All right, let me take a quick break going into the bathroom. All right, we're good to go. Mm. You know, I'm I'm glad you made that distinction because yeah. a lot of people like to describe themselves as like um, functioning alcoholics or social drinkers or mm. whatever. But when you have a social life that is four or five times a night a week, sorry, yeah. And you're drinking two, three drinks a night. You drinking eight, twelve alcoholic beverages a week, which is your your body is still like not really functioning off of alcohol because alcohol takes a little bit to to come out of your system. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't I don't know how long cocaine takes to come out of your system, but I don't think a lot of people realize that like you are you even though you are not drinking at home bored or you, you're not drinking to feel anything, you you are still not giving your body the opportunity to. I don't want to say relapse, but the opportunity to what's the word I'm looking for? To like come off of the drug to like just recover. Exist, recover. Thank you. <laughs> it wasn't. Re I know it's re something. I want. I want. I want. I want to add to what you're saying, but I don't know if this is what you're saying. A lot of people in Barbados are alcoholics and don't know. A lot of people in Barbados are addicted to what? marijuana and don't know. That too. Mm -hmm. That too. I will always say it's very easy. People say, "Oh, marijuana's not date. It's not like cigarettes. I have nicotine." I mean, it was like. But the people literally do not function unless they like start the day smoking. I worked with many people like that. I've gone to school with many people like that. It's like they can they they do it morning when they wake up, maybe at lunch, two or three in the evening. They say that's how they get through their day. I was like, that's literally what I would do with cigarettes. I would be smoking <laughs> my cigarettes to get through the day, and I know I was yeah. addicted. <laughs> the, the I hear the phrase "wake and bacon." That's not cute. If every mo every morning you wake up, you it's have nice, to. It's nice every now and then, but right, like every, every day, day is. <laughs> no, that is an addiction. Man, right? I would say that. And I find that, I find because our culture is like so ingrained, like the land I invented rum, and if you go out, you got to drink sand. And also, there is a there is an element of funny, funny enough to me, like 
there's a masculine element to it where there's a standard of you gotta be able to drink these mm. drinks. How you oh Yo. you you soft because you, you can't drink right right you right. can't drink and it's be, so there's a standard that you gotta meet where you gotta drink yourself to like you know to a stupor in order to be to fit in and socialize that kind of thing. And I find a lot of people are are functional, but alcoholics though they're you alcoholics know, at any day. And then I don't. Like this is this is kind of changing the topic a bit, but it, it bothers me to like the amount, the way people spend money behind these things. Be like I know people that re- damn like again I know people that refuse to drink rum, but that's like a social thing. That's because rum cheap. So in your in your head, no rum is inferior. I use a big man, so you can't be drinking nothing inferior. So what you do know is you spend three times the price of rum on a whiskey. So you can buy a a a a, a, a Jameson or a Johnny Walker, and just getting drunk, just outside, just to impress who? Men? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Men right. don't care about you. Right. They really don't. They check it for you. Because the fact that you've got to already be spending more money than you probably got just to impress these men is already a bad sight. Like, <laughs> what is the point there? Just exactly. drink, drink your treat, drink if you want to drink it. I would very happily drink a $5 rum or a three for 10 banks or whatever right. it is these days. Yeah, I was about to say I don't know if that's a <laughs> it's still a thing. <laughs> <laughs> but um okay, so so you so you got Heidi first time. When you got Heidi first time, the next day was there like a crash? Oh, there's yeah, the crashes. They don't tell you how thing it is. It's just you just don't want to function. Like you you will you would literally sleep the day away. You would just be low energy. Even when you're doing stuff, you're just gonna be going through because you have to. There's just no energy, okay, no I desire. Have a it's not really a hangover. It's, you don't feel anything like physically, but mm. you just don't really have energy for anything. You're just doing things because you have to. And that's why I think you see people that the general people who like just go through a date, go a line, that'll right. keep them going. That's what I always avoided. So it's like a, so it's like um is it like a mental exhaustion or is it a physical exhaustion from I think the definitely more cooking. mental than anything. I mean after a long time, I'm sure will be physical too, but I would definitely say it's more mental for me. Ah, that is crazy. Yeah. Damn. Okay, and then, <clears throat> so, eventually you got addicted, you would yeah. say. Yeah, because I would just, because Canada, I didn't do it too, too much because I only started doing that my second year there. I was only there for two years. Mm-hmm. Then I came back to Barbados. I did not know anything about the city of Barbados, but I found a friend who knew people I it's see. always a friend, huh? It's always a friend. But can you just ask what color the friend was? <laughs> You're white. Marcus. Okay, just, uh, just. Marcus. I'm just asking. Marcus. I just want to know. Come on, man. The Canadian friends are white, too. So <laughs> there's like, because again, I was my school was still minority in the white people compared to how Canada is. Right, right, Because right. it was a private boarding school. So there's plenty oh, of Asians. I did not pick it was a boarding school. Yes. Yeah, there's plenty Asian. Yeah, I was living in a dorm. Um, that probably made um, the fight harder, I guess. Yeah. They had Asians wow. that were, I think, made up about 50%, mostly Chinese. Um, some Africans were there. Say, not many Europeans. No, I think there's only like one in my year. I think it was you know, Asia made up majority. Then some Africans and a handful of people from the Caribbean. And then United States. And then South America. A lot of Mexicans. That too. Well, yeah. Mexicans. Yeah. Surprisingly, they were not too heavily involved. Thank you all for the, that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm Colombian I by birth. <laughs> I was There was only one that was always with in the group, but it was it was the white people who were supplying. <laughs> okay, so... so Do you have Colombian heritage? Yeah, well, I, I was adopted, so I was born in Colombia. Oh, same. Okay. Yeah, so I don't know anything about where Colombia I don't know Spanish I don't know I don't know one shite <laughs> I love it yeah <laughs> so you can understand that any better okay so okay so you come back to Barbados and so you say you don't know the cocaine scene but your wife your, your friend knows the scene yeah right? I'll tell you about the race right, right right I didn't tell you about that you said what but I did say it. <laughs> <laughs> it's recorded so I can't so your white friend Introduce you to the scene in Barbados. Yeah. Um, but I do want to ask you though. I have to ask you, from what you've seen, is there a relationship between culture, class, race, 
and drug of choice. I like how you tee that up. Oh, definitely. Okay. I would definitely say it because... So I save myself. Man. You save yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't because I, I... I didn't really notice it until I was talking to Kofi. I was like, damn. These are just ninety percent white people. I do not hang out with majority white people at all. But when I was involved in that, when I'd be going by people's places or just the people there, they're just like there's like maybe one or two black people, and then all the rest white. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Okay. And then they'll come. The white people come for all wakes of life too, for the most part. Like you got the poor whites that would be involved, and then of course you got the others. The affluence. Yes, and like. Like we're talking, you like they tell you where they the places they work. I'm just like, oh, <laughs> the people that they work with, and they're just talking. I never saw the people with some of the higher ups I hear about. And then people know as a public figure. I was like, oh, <laughs> okay, well that's something. That that part was definitely eye opening. Mm. Oh, wow. uh, these are public <laughs> figures that would be um, just to clarify that would also be using the cocaine. I. Can't say a hundred percent for sure, but they said oh. they would do it like if they go by them or if they're like at work with them or they're talking to them, they would be on it. So I can't say for sure that they were involved, but the way that they said they just so casually used it and they were in the presence of said yeah. persons. Right. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, so so right, so you come back to Barbados, you don't know how big the scene is. Um so tell us about how how that was. Oh, it started in Gap, I remember one time with my friend. He just went down the street, found a man, and came back, and that's how it started. He just, that's how you do it. He never tell me who it was at first that he was buying from. And then one time, he didn't go to Gap with me. I went, and a man came and found me out <laughs> when he saw me outside one of the bars smoking. I said, is you such a such friend? I'm like, yeah. He's, I, you, are you the friend that he's be sharing his stuff with? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I was, of course, Lewis Gap was like, this undercover cop, <laughs> like, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, it's me, Izzy, Izzy fella that he's be buying from. Like, oh, and then, I don't know. I think he was probably, he might have just tried to take advantage of me with prices because I spent, I've never spent that much money on any sort of drug in my life. But that night I did, it was like $800. Whoa, wow. whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa. And that would last you how long? That was like a week. Maybe Zachary. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Zachary killed me. <laughs> Dog. I, uh, yeah. Today I saw a tweet that that read, "Is seven hundred dollars a week a lot of money?" As someone asked, "Do you mean going out or coming in?" <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, dog. Right. That is a lot of money. Yeah, because I. That's what I said. I don't know. I never asked my friend about the price. Right. I would just give him a little bit yeah, of money. Understandable. And he would go and, and that. But this man made. I was like, I was giving everything to the boss. Like, I don't got. I want cash on me. Or I would drive you to the ATM because the ATM the gap wasn't working that particular night. It's like I would drive you to the ATM to get it. And at, and at this point, did you did you identify that you had a problem or no? It was around this time, yeah. This because this has been like a year or two in, right? Because it was it was like a three year stretch. I, I really right, started, right, right. yeah. Wow. So this has been about a year or two in, probably near closer to two. I was like, because I looked at my bank statement the next morning, I was just like, hmm. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> yeah. And when you made these choices, interestingly, would you say that would you were you inebriated at the time? Like, were you, were you were you on alcohol at the time when you decided to get the cocaine? Most times, yeah. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you plan it ahead before going out. Really? Yeah, but then most times, just like you just you're just you're feeling the vibe on the whim, and then you just do it on the whim. But like occasionally, just like yeah, I'll get some today. I'll tell my friend, I'll get money, whatever. Damn, but I think it's people that say that nothing good has happened after one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> So I was just thinking about like three o'clock. Daylight saving time. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Go back to hours, right? Yeah. right? But I'm just thinking like when, like after, like an you you hype you 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 drunk friends also drunk maybe drunker than you peer pressure whatever. If a man come and say, look, you got eight hundred dollars in your bank. I got this thing here. Quit fast. Tell me something. What you want to do? I can see it being an easy thing, especially if you've been in that situation before right. or whatever. Yeah, man, that's that's. I crazy. I think you got taken advantage of. Not that yeah, I know the price. He, he hit a lick for sure. Yeah, yeah not that I know probably. the price, but the scenario. It yeah. just sounds like he. Probably... I mean, like when this man drove me, there were like two other men in the car too. Like this was no. I was just like, oh, I better get this money out. <laughs> that's why I was definitely thinking. Were you were you afraid like the car ride? There, there's definitely a part I did not speak the whole ride. I can tell you that I was just thinking, wow, this is my life. <laughs> and it was just you. 
at that particular night. Because my friends are other friends that don't that didn't do it were still uh, because, like I said, that night I, my other friend who does do it wasn't there, but my other friends were still in the bar. I'm not gonna lie to you. That is, the, I think that is the scariest thing that you've said. To, you said so mm, far, definitely. 100%. Just the fact that you were alone doing it. It was mm-hmm. just you. It wasn't your friends around. No. Nope. It wasn't like the loud music, nothing. It was just you, silence <clears> with four main, three main, and, and you going to the ATM. So you just were your thoughts to me. I was just like, let me just get this money and get back to the people. Because <laughs> that was just like, I agreed to this somehow for some reason. I could have just turned around and walked back in the bar, which I'm sure he didn't want to be in that bar. But then I, I could have done just that. But I said, Shh. I knew that that's what I started really realizing. It's like, Oh, this is might be a problem. Right. So when you realized it was a problem, did you immediately say, like, let me do what I can to like kick this habit? Not immediately. I say it still took a little while. I, I never went to buy it again though. I would say mm. that much. And <laughs> that put me off doing that to be the one going to buy it again. I said, if my friend's not there, I'm not even gonna leave the bar. <laughs> like, I'm just gonna stay at the bar if that particular friend is not there. So I said, I'm just going to yeah, so that that was the only thing I did immediately change, but I still did find a way to work on it eventually. But it took it, t- it still took a few months. And then one time I was like, you know what? Let me just leave my card home. Let me take out for cheap drinks, like a twenty dollars, maybe another ten twenty for food. And then that's how I started weaving myself because, like, I knew I did not need to reach a point that I would be going for. Got back to my house in St. James, back to get out to get drugs. So I said, let me leave my card home. That's going to help. Because mm. I know my friend's not going to lend me money to buy this stuff. Because this stuff is not cheap. So let me start leaving my card home. So that's how I started personally working on myself. And eventually after, the withdrawals were rough, I can tell you that. I would just, I did want it a lot. But I kind of described the feelings I went through some days. Can, can you def- try to? I mean, it was definitely some of my lowest, lowest points, just mentally, just, I just couldn't fuck, because I want, because I wanted to get back to the high so much, I just, without it, I was just feeling lost a lot of the time, because I just didn't know what to do at that point, because I was just so used to being able to do, oh, just get this, and I'm in a good go-going mood, and then it just, it took like a few weeks just to go struggle through that before I could overcome that feeling every day waking up. Sometimes I couldn't even sleep properly just because I was just so, I was just craving it so much. It was just, yeah. So what do you say, what do you say this was the lowest time in your life, you would say? Probably, yeah. Because maybe not like overall, but I think it's just because it lasted longer than any right. other time. Right. It was probably lowest because I probably had lower points, but I think just because that one, Went on so long. It was just weeks, probably a few months. That would definitely be a low point. Did, did your family know that you were going through it? Oh, no. <laughs> I did not tell them shit. They just presumed it was my usual depressive spells or whatever, so they didn't question it too much. So, yeah, I just... Y- usual um, depressive spells? Right, yeah. so can, yeah, you compare, yeah. <laughs> can you compare the withdrawals to um, a depressive spell? Hmm. Well, with the withdrawal, I knew what I was missing in my life at that point. With depression, you don't always know. You're just sometimes just depressed because you are. There's no, there's nothing that would necessarily trigger it. Some days you go to bed the happiest in the world. Next day you just wake up just depressed. And you don't know what's triggered it or if anything did at all. And you go through that for a few days and you just be feeling down and not want to function. You're just not mentally there. But with the withdrawal, I definitely knew what was causing it. And that's what I think made it difficult. I knew what right. could th- yeah. fix it. That would exactly anything that makes it worse because you yeah. can't have this It's like depression, that- you, don't, you don't know. You know what's going to make you feel better. Maybe nothing will. But here I knew, well, if I get in line, I'll be good again, right? <laughs> was this possibly the, the motivation for you to try these things, um, the depression? In hindsight, probably. At the time, I was just thinking when I first got into it, it was just like, it was just a social thing. But I, I've been struggling with depression since I was very young. <laughs> the same Around the same time I got diagnosed with OCD. Because a lot of people that have OCD also struggle with depression. Mm. So it was around the same time that I started getting that. So, yeah. Did you, did you ever, you said that you, you don't really know what makes you depressed. Uh, did you ever find out what made you depressed? 
Oh, now in my later years. The no, def- yeah, because I started doing therapy like two years ago. Right. So now being able to actually, you, man. yeah, yeah. <laughs> being actually to talk through things <clears throat> properly with somebody, you actually do generally start to understand things because they will, psychologists and psychiatrists would ask the questions that will make you actually think, well, is this the thing? Because when, when you're just with yourself, sometimes you can't always think of it because you're just thinking, this is how I'm feeling now. You don't know what's thing. But when you're with somebody actually talking through it, you're, you're, you can better understand. They they might ask you to such and such and say, no, maybe not, not or that. But then they might delve into, they might ask you about describe this, describe that. And then you realize, oh, this is maybe what something I went through. Mm. And because you, <clears throat> since you have identified what it could be, has, has that helped you? Oh, definitely. I have I still have like the off day here and there, but it's definitely much more manageable before. It was not like long spells, like a week or so. Now it's maybe a day or two. I go through it. I, but I've also been able to manage it better, right. to do things for myself, like just small things. I've been doing the gym after I started therapy. So I started the gym because I think, because COVID got me to my unhealthiest as well because we're obviously we're all indoors i was unmotivated i can only really get mm-hmm. motivated with other people around right we're just inside the house so yeah i tell you, i found gym is another thing to help for sure exercising in general and yeah just doing things for yourself is small things that help because i always wanted to avoid medication because that's just another thing i might get addicted to so i was right. not going that route at all i have, some, I have something <clears throat> to ask you are, are, are we getting too deep are you good? No, we're good. Okay, okay. This it's is... all things I've established with myself. Okay, okay, okay. Of course, I won't talk about particulars, what I feel, or what, but right. I can describe how and whatever. I... But I'm not just going to say about my personal life or whatever. Right. Right. So I'm good at this level. I do want to ask, though, um, one thing that we, we glossed over, um, but the, fa- the fact that you were adopted, does that, does that contribute anything to your depression at all? It did for a time. Because there's just something about identity. You don't, I literally don't know shit about my parents. There's no birth records because I was found in front of a church. Wow. So okay. the children home, they had to give me a name because there's literally no birth records. My birthday is picked. So I don't even know my own birthday. So there's definitely some identity crisis is there. But yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, that definitely was something I struggled with more when I was younger. And now I've just kind of accepted that's just how it is. I don't know if I ever go back and try and find anything. It's whether well, more I order I get is more I've just accepted for why I am now than rather what who I was when I was born or whatever. I don't know. But so Do you ever um thought of doing like any of the twenty three on me ancestry dot com? I mean don't do those services, <laughs> but the the actual process? I don't know how that works with somebody like me, because I've done my Cousin has done it extensively with my uh, family f- for sure right now. Like he's do- he's going through every avenue, but it's just that's more so because you can get like records, right? So I I've never really thought about it because I'm like, well, I don't have I don't even have to, I have a city to start with, and that's about it. Um, I th- I mean I I don't know, but from what I understand, you, you just like swab your mouth and send the swab. Mm. To a lab because again, like don't use twenty three. I mean, they steal your data and they sell it. <laughs> but um, I mean that's just an avenue you could look at if you want. Like, I never thought about that. I I can't imagine what it would be <clears throat> in a scenario like that where I, as you say, it's an identity crisis. Like you know, you're from Colombia, you end up in Barbados, and then yeah. I feel like what what does that mean? What happens from B to C to B? Because mm. I, and it's also because I do know other families that have adopted children. They actually know their about their families. Um, the only cons, the only cover I know is my sister also does know. So I could, I, I could always talk to her. Your sister is I, also adopted. Yeah, so she doesn't. She's from Brazil, but she um, doesn't find her nearly as much. She's never really cared to go and find anything. But so good to have. At least I have her. I can talk to about it if I right. ever want to. But yeah, because I know adoptive families that know their family, so it's a whole different thing. Mm. So, so do you, so what is your birthday? That what, when do you celebrate your birthday? Twenty fourth of May, nineteen ninety two. Mm. We like to make jokes. I'm Pablo Escobar's son because I died the same. I mean, I was born the same year he died. So 
Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. You know, you could have had like Beyonce's birthday. They that was you know, any <laughs> birthday ever. You could have shared your birthday with Beyonce, literally. And Beyonce was nobody then. I mean, mm-hmm. it. it's not too late, you know. I like, just... who can stop if you change your birthday right now? You could, yeah. You could. <laughs> uh, who knows if you're closer or farther from the actual birthday? You could do what you want, literally. I have that August 30th, that. that's, su- that's a sucky birthday. <laughs> Not more after school being a vacation. That's so bad. That's so bad. I've was... had CXCs on my birthdays back to back years. Like, yo, yo, what yeah, would you pay? Yeah, they curse you. <laughs> what you Let's pay talk that? about the real serious issues in your life. <laughs> that is horrible. Why would they do that? That is sick. No, it's our consideration. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, man. But, um, but yeah, um, thanks for sharing that. And I feel like, I feel a lot of people, a lot of people do, do have that depressive period. The reason why I ask about you identifying your reason for your depression. Um, what you said was very true. That a lot of people just wake up depressed and don't know. At least, and it's weird because, as you said, the cocaine, you said the withdrawals were hard, but you knew why you felt that way. Mm-hmm. The depression, who knows sometimes how people feel and what would alleviate that. Correct. Wow. Well, okay, so when you got when, in terms of the withdrawals, how long did the withdrawals go on for? You said a few weeks, like three to five weeks around that period. And you can't describe them. I can just remember just being low energy all the time, not wanting to do anything, just. Oh, but always craving, always craving to go. That's the thing that will always wow. stand out. I was always craving it. Yeah, that's the biggest thing that stands out for me was just the low energy. And cravings. Do you remember when you stopped craving it? Like the day that you realized, or maybe you realized like, it's been four days and I haven't thought about it. I wish I did. Mm. That would have been a really good thing to remember. Like mm-hmm. a birthday. It was just, <laughs> yeah. it was just one day. I just realized, wow, I just not craving it. I never, I didn't even think about it when I was going out. And then a few days later, I just really clicked in. It's like, I've gone on this long. I've not done it. <laughs> But I don't know how long I felt like that, that I wasn't craving it. I just realized I hadn't done it for a long time. <laughs> um, I have a question I want to ask, but I don't know if Marcus or Muzzy has anything um they want to add. I mean, because you want to move, you move on from... Kind of, yeah, kind of kind of shifting topics. Well, no, I, well, for, well, the only thing I wanted to say was that it sounds as though you, in terms of you kicking the, the cocaine habit, you did it on your own. Yep, I didn't ask. I didn't, I didn't tell anybody about it. I didn't ask for anything. I one or two friends knew I was doing it. that didn't do it, but I just I didn't really go into it with them. I was just they just knew I wasn't doing it anymore. I guess. All right, so no support whatsoever. Be honest, be, insane. So so we can move on to what Kofi got to say, but for you to do that on your own That's with crazy. OCD, be Yo, I forget what oh, that. I can That's tell you, I smoked more cigarettes, but. <laughs> Well, but yeah, <laughs> lesser of two evils. I feel you like can't, that's can't, a, a, everything I want. A, a, a win is a win. A win is a win. Let me take those. I just want to commend you, dog. That is out. Uh, that is friggin' amazing. Real. That is amazing. Real. I just want to <laughs> commend you for that. Anyway, yeah. I still advocate getting help, though. Yeah, I'm sure he. Would oh, definitely. Too. I think people should. Yeah. If I had the avenues, I mean the uh, things available to me now, mm-hmm. if I if I I probably would have gone to a therapist or something or found like some sort of treatment or something. But at the time, we're just like, I'm just going to not, I'm just going to do this. So I do not want to involve anyone. I just want to, I don't want to tell anyone. I just want to get this over with. But it was embarrassing for you, kind of? I don't know if embarrassing is the right word, but I guess it's too proud, maybe. Just, I didn't want to ask or anything. Ask for help. Yeah. Probably it was a, Was there a particular moment that you knew all right, you know what? This is it. What? What? When? When was that? What was that moment like? Um, I mean, because these things tend to progress, and there's there's always this moment where you come to some sort of realization. You know what? I need to do something different. Um, can you describe that moment for you? Hmm. What was the straw that brought the camel's back? Well, besides going off in the car, I can't really think of anything. Too particular. That was that, that was, was a, a day that was a big just straw. Like, yeah, <laughs> like, I'm just like, what is my life leading to? Because you know, it made me think of the movie uh, Requiem for a Dream when I, when I was in that car. It's just like, am I gonna be ending up like the ending 
of this the movie. With, I mean, they were doing heroin, I think. It was, yeah, it was heroin. I'm, is this where I'm leading to at this point? Like some shitty ending, I'm going to be in jail, dead, or selling myself? <laughs> like it was at that point, it was like, yeah. That was that was definitely that moment I will always remember as being the moment. It's just like, all right, something has got to happen. It didn't happen immediately then, but I knew that then was definitely the shift. That was definitely the shift in direction. <laughs> Did it bring you to tears ever, or it was more just a... Oh, yeah, definitely. I just, I was struggling sometimes. Shh. I was definitely struggling sometimes. Ah. <sighs> Um, what's I saying, please? Um, <laughs> something as well. Um, yeah, it really did. Um, so earlier, uh, I don't, I don't remember if the cameras were rolling or not, but um, Marcus accidentally said crack <laughs> instead of cocaine. Um, I know Bayesians will, will often use dope, but an- another reason why I thought you, I you were the. <laughs> 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 <Hey>, my <Ma>, rugby. <laughs> um, another reason why I thought you would have been a really good guest, despite us having um, someone on that was already a di- an addict, an ex addict. I feel like there's no such recovering thing. addict. Recovering yeah. addict. Sorry, I can't remember the term. Yeah. I we feel guy on already that. Oh, right, okay, okay. but I feel like this idea that dope encompasses all drugs is something we need to um, drop need to, yeah. because. Well, that's what I'm going to ask you. Cocaine and crack different. Cocaine and crack different. You ever um, had any experience with like crack crack? Mm-mm, no, that was something. Or you know anyone that was using crack crack? Not that I can really think of. It was just always this cocaine, weed, or alcohol for me down here. And of course, the party pills. But party pills is whatever. That was just more of a... Because you never do party pills except at parties. It's just, <laughs> so that's a, just a different type of drug. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah, it was just those four that I ever knew people associating with those. So, I know I never... Because crack is... I don't even honestly fully understand what crack is. I just know putting a pipe. And it's, and it's just a, but it, it's still type of cocaine. Like, I'm still actually not 100% sure what it is. Yeah, like, <laughs> I, I don't get it either. Um, There's actually no reason why you should get it. Cocaine is the more expensive. <laughs> cocaine is the... Yeah, mm-hmm. is that is why they... The cla- that's where the class thing comes in. Though. Right. So, like... um. Is um, CIA didn't put <laughs> cocaine in the black neighborhoods? It was crap. Okay. So like that, I mean, let me not say that's a fact, but like that's you know they say that's <laughs> that's what they say, there. right? Yeah. Um, it's important to make the distinction though. So you have like, your visa? <laughs> 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 edit that. Oh, anyway, so like you know they'll say uh, a lot of the prickle people, quote unquote, um, are addicted to dope. Is that's actually crack? Like you go to the crack house, not necessarily a. a it's not like it, it, you go to the crack house and do lines. Um, from what I understand, snorting cocaine is more of a immediate... N- How long does the high last? A few hours, I would say. From what you understand is like the crack high is more intense, but not as long. Mm, so that. that's why you you long for it and it's cheaper. So you go and buy it, but it doesn't last as long, but it's still destroying the system. It's mm-hmm. still... And yeah. your system not really coming out. It just doesn't last as long because oh, wow. it's not getting directly to your brain and stuff. I, you know. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Um, were there any other, like, did you deteriorate um, physically otherwise? Um, or, did, or I didn't get to that to that stage. Uh, I remember our former guests, you know, you talk about, pe- you know, people totally destroying their noses. And um, Were there any other physical... Um, uh, All right, that's uh, our first that. time for Mosey Camera today. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, w- were there any other like uh, physical um, repercussions for like using the the actual drug? And I asked this because, um, you know, we had another guest on with uh, David. And, you know, he was saying that, you know, sometimes it isn't until people are hospitalized. Uh, um, I think he had said, you know, a lot, there's a lot of damage that happens to, like, your nostrils and, and so on. 
Um, for you, were there any other like physical repercussions um, from using? I don't think I reached that point, but I did definitely lose weight. Right. It's, I, you definitely lose your appetite as well. That's one thing you don't want to do is really eat. It's not like... Don't let your body hear this. No, they're just like... You just, just do not eat, really. Go you're ahead, just going. Bodies, no. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're not sitting... You don't want to sit down and do anything. You want to be moving. So I can say I definitely ate a lot less. So I was, I was losing weight that way. But besides a little bit of issues with my sinuses, I didn't really, thankfully, experience too many things that I can think of. I just lost a lot of sleep too, obviously. So... I think that probably affected my mental yeah, that's, that's health. I wouldn't say physical, but definitely mental. Right. Took a toll more than anything. The, the sinus thing, though, is interesting. And I never thought of that. Like, so is does it clog up your... What exactly does it do to your sinuses? Like, when you... Do you... You're, I don't know how to describe it. You're a person that has issues with sinuses? Well, now I do. They're, they're just a lot more dripping than it should be, I think. Because I know I've seen some people, they just, like, Completely destroy the inside of their nose, but I never got to that point. But I think definitely more dripping from my sinuses was the only thing that I ever noticed. I don't know if it's because of that, but I'm presuming so. Mm. I never directly said there would be, but I, I'm like I'm pretty sure that's why. Because <laughs> you because you 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 feel a significant difference between after you were on it and before, right? Yeah, yeah. But I don't say it was more mental than anything. The anguish <laughs> because there's physical, not really. So okay, so when you, when you think of, when you think of it now, though, you say the the mental anguish. Um, do you ever yearn for it now, um, or are you like well, repulsed by it? Yeah, I'd never want to go back down there again. Not like, no matter how good I think it feel, cause I don't even know if it was really that good <laughs> for feeling. Mm. Now reflect on it, or like, I'm good. I there's nothing that ever wants me to desire for it now. <laughs> and 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 in terms of your so. Does your did you speak to your family since about you going through that? No, nope. <laughs> oh, I've so, kept that with my therapist and a few close friends. So we actually what, spoke about that um when when we first started. I don't know if you remember, but we yeah, I, I remember that, that yeah. much. I was like, <laughs> what if my family sees this now? Right. I mean, I could have a proper discussion with them now, but it's still not something I want to do. I, I, I hope. have to. <laughs> how, now, how how do, you, how do you think they will feel when they hear you um, talk about what you went through? Probably want to know why I didn't talk to them, which is valid, because I never really wanted to talk to them about anything. And that was just me. Was, I didn't, in general, I don't like, I didn't like sharing my emotions with people in general, especially not my family, because mm. when you're younger, you just share little things that might take you out of context or just, no, parents yeah. can be, or they just don't understand. <laughs> I think now as a um, more mature person. Right, I so it, was know it like how teenage to angst, or was it like um... I think it was definitely teenage to young adult angst. Cause okay, <laughs> I, was, I spent a lot of time just not having a good relationship with my parents. I, it's, it's great now, but when I was younger, definitely not. I think it was probably just because of that. But I said even with my friends who I had good relationships, I didn't really want to share any of this with. They knew I did it, but didn't really share explicit details. You know. The pride probably didn't help either. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, can I ask you this? Uh, why did you Why did you decide to come on the show? Well, if you asked me a few years ago, I definitely would have said no. But after therapy and going through, I can understand. I feel comfortable talking about it. I don't know if there's others that might be going through similar things. It's good to put it out there. I've never really shared my story before, so I thought maybe I could. <laughs> Right. I just asked because I guess you, I guess you're, you're, I don't want to use the word coming out because I mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> are you, but it is, you That's are, you are revealing, you are revealing something. Um, um, That's a very intimate part of you to everybody, right? So your, your family is going to kind of learn as we are learning. Yeah. Um. So I just wanted to know, I just wanted to know what your, what your motivation was. Just knowing that you didn't talk to them first or whatever. Hmm. Um. But 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 yeah, I I totally get that. I I understand what you're saying when it comes to this whole family thing. I got things that is good that I just really don't want my parents see me in that light. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. I agree. And there are things I've revealed on here that my parents would never. You know what's that? Do, do you have your parents seen this? 
my malicious mother does. <laughs> I like, her. I like your mommy. <laughs> I love her dearly. I, like I love her dearly. I told her, I told her, don't watch any content with me because I used to be myself and thing. Listen, it's a whole other part of me. Mar- like, you ever hear Marcus um, uh, say when he speaks to his mother? Yeah, say. <laughs> yeah. And it's a thing. I will be honest. It's a thing. Um, I honestly think it's very brave. Those that that um that you're doing this um, is not necessarily the type of um. Especially someone that's trying to build a social platform doing something. It's not exactly the type of limelight you necessarily want to be in. Um, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. But I I genuinely think it's very brave of you to um, share this story with others that might not realize how easy the path is mm-hmm. to go to get, how easy it is to get on the path. And people that are trying to come off and just don't know that it's okay to ask for help. Definitely. People don't necessarily know what they're going through something until <laughs> they're told they're going through something to be honest yeah I think that's definitely a key thing to take from it just like whatever you're going through and it doesn't even have to be related to this at all just whatever Correct. just make sure you can reach out to people I definitely think earlier if I told more people about it I'd probably have more help I mean because I had literally none <laughs> so I would have had help going through that and then any other stage of my life where I struggled I didn't really open up to people it just, yeah, you you really got to open to people if you need help. And, and do, do you have any other advice for for anybody else? Hmm. I've got to think, <laughs> honestly. But yeah, that, how about don't I, do cocaine? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, kids, don't do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> how original. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but, I have two questions. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Right. Um, okay, so the first is, um, whatever became of the relationships that you had, um, the cocaine relationships, um, were there um, casualties? Is this something that you had to make a determination? Well, you know, I need to sever these relationships. How did you kind of navigate that? Yeah, I'd have that friend who'd always ask to go out. The one, the same friend who would buy for me. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I don't see him anymore after because I just stopped responding. That was another thing I... I Besides leaving the credit uh, debit card home, I'd be going out with him, but I wouldn't have the money to spend, and he'd be doing his own thing. And then eventually, he just he wouldn't come hang out anymore because I think he just got tired <laughs> of just being the only one and just moved. I never really followed up. I I talked to him like every now and then, I'd show him on social media, but never kept a friendship. You know, just kind of show him. But he did tell me he got off of it eventually. Yeah. So. Bigger. Sorry, I'm sorry. I was very glad to hear it. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna get there because I would be rather hypocritical for me to come on here Yo. and say no. But he did. He he did get off of it. Yo, and my head on my. Sorry, <laughs> never mind. Nah, he's living. Okay, and and the, the, you know, there are no like tragic stories or anything of nah, people that it was because okay. there's only really him, and then there's the odd people that he would introduce me to, and like I didn't really know them that well anyway. And there's so the close friends. They were, yeah, that, they were just people I would do the lines with. We talked the shite then. And that was it. Is it. Would you say there's a really rampant drug scene? Would you describe it as rampant and like aggressive and like... I don't think rampant's the word I'd use. I'd probably say lively. It's definitely very present. Moz? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. You had another question. question. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. right, 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 right. I get quiet. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I remember, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> is there an upside? Was there an upside to using? Besides, I felt no. You're spending money. You're going to keep spending money. The lows of the uh, after it, or they suck. <laughs> so there is really no upside. In the, in the moment, yes. It felt like an upside. Other than that, when you're looking back, it's like, it's a shit. <laughs> I'm gonna ask a very weird question. Um and then I'm gonna ask another one. <laughs> Sorry, but could it have in in, in in relation to the upsides, could it have possibly I don't wanna say put you in different circles, but could it have possibly introduced you to people who you might not have necessarily hung out with that might have been beneficial? What is going on here? What, I'm where, just where, asking. Where, 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 are you asking if I was networking? 
<laughs> literally, <laughs> literally, oh my God. literally. <laughs> we were going so <laughs> literally. That's exactly what I'm asking me. <laughs> so. I suppose some of them do use it as a way of networking because, like, they were talking about their jobs and, like, they, they got to do this. Like, they had relationships, like, business relationships, some Sorry. of them that, but I had nothing to do with it. So I just listened sometimes. So I'm just like, I was, I was, I have nothing to offer to her. I was like, because I current, I was working either at UE at the time or with my family. I'm just like, neither of those can get involved. So I'm just going to shut up and not mention my life. So. I was just like I would listen, but I mean, technically, yes, I could have networked. <laughs> but so, it's an actual thing that like people. Oh yeah, say, they were they were, like some of the discussions the they were having. Yeah. They're literally having discussions about work and their work lives while well, this is going on. That's like go back to earlier where I said they were around people of certain like public figures. Mm. They're around them. What about like playing dominoes? <laughs> that was. I mean, don't do it. Like that wasn't. Yeah, 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 that, no, 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 no. I was just curious <laughs> how that happens. I um, was right. Okay, so this. is my question. Uh, Tony Mike, thanks. <laughs> um, okay. So, in your mind, is there a drug hierarchy? This like, so by that I mean, okay, so we're off cocaine. Did that mean that you have to be off everything? Because I, in our conversation with David, David was like, couldn't use anything. It couldn't be marijuana. It couldn't be alcohol. Uh, alcohol and whatnot. Do you differentiate on your in your personal journey? Do you differentiate um, th- those drugs? Um, I said, well, okay, cocaine was the problem, but I can't do this or I can't do. I definitely was just my aim was get off cocaine because I've. I never got to the point where I felt addicted to weed. I just smoked with my friend. I just be vibing. I'm good, and I didn't. Right. I didn't need it anymore. I don't. I never went out just seeking it. Mm. That I was just like, if my friends have it. Like, I want to have some tonight. Yeah, I can go out and drink. Yeah, yeah. Cause there's a debate about it, you know, because you know people. I mean, there was a controversial uh, program. I can't remember what it was exactly um, in the U.S., um, but they were using drugs to get people off other drugs. Um, and you know, obviously, it's, it was it was controversial in the sense that well, you're still using drugs. Um, is it the point to get persons off of drugs totally, or is it the point to get them off of the more um, uh, detrimental ones? So I just wanted to get your perspective on on that um, because there's a train of thought that um, if you're quitting something, you gotta quit it fully, you quit anything that's like it, and there's the other train of thought about. Um, you need just need to get off of you just f- need to focus on this particular thing and get off of that. So I just want to get your perspective on. No, I just for me personally, I'm not going to speak for a, just a general view. I just right. for me personally, I realized what was doing the most damage to me financially and physically and mm-hmm. mentally. Right. That? So I, that's what I wanted to cut, get rid of completely. Because mm-hmm. the others, it's whatever. I was fine. I mean, I still have reduced them. Like I don't do them nearly as much. Right. Okay. But. They were never. I need this out my life now. They never reached that point with them. Okay, Zach, thank you for coming. Mm. Thank you for having me. This has been definitely a unique experience for me. <laughs> this is, I think a unique experience for all of us. I don't. I don't think. I don't. I think things haven't gotten that deep in a while. Um, and we appreciate you, especially for what you have done on your own and that willpower and courage yeah. to do it, and to still have a. A little voice in the back of your head saying, Yo, this bear shit, yeah. <laughs> See that there? Left out, More left people out. gotta listen to that voice. Mm-hmm. And they don't. Um, before we go though, you could just plug where people could find you if you want to reach out to you. I am Zach Stab on Twitter, Z A K S T A B. B as in Barbados. And then what what is my Instagram? Instagram is the same, right? And then my Twitch is the Ludi Local. My Instagram, the other Instagram for the Twitch is Sir Ludi Loco. I also post about the local happenings that we host at Aeon, the gaming nights and the tournaments and whatever we host there. Honestly, uh, you mentioned the other one. Barbados Content Creators. Yes, that's I have oh, that friends. coming up. 
I was like, I was like, I know I'm forgetting something, Yo, right? Oh yeah. Um, on the 19th, we have the Barbados content creators. What are we talking about this week? I have it here. It's a thing with Omar Kennedy. If you're familiar with him, he is. The, anime um, yeah, he he, he the, yeah he he's, is he's the, one of the uh, owners of of Aeon Bar and Grill and anime con where is it uh all right next one we're going to be talking about the bcsi organization let me get a summary of this oh god why is there so much messages in here but basically it's a Barbados it's an organization conditions. that is trying to um make better opportunities for content creators in the island for more international things basically if there's content creation we want to get to say oh here's here's the actual written statement to the point, as many of you may know, Anime Con is not simply a convention, but we pride ourselves as being facilitators of creative arts and pop culture and wish to make Barbados a pop culture hub to the world by 2030. This year, we started the, the I cannot pronounce, Terranautica saga, right? That's the con thing. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. As such, we've part of several organizations at the government, the governmental level, the quasi-governmental level, and the corporate level in order to begin the push. Team Anime Con is working with the Barbados Coalition of Service Industries. Right. And that's what I was trying to find right. what this BCSI. actually stands for. So BCSI is what we'll be talking about in the no next content creator live on the November 19th, 6.30 p.m. at Aeon Bar and Grill, Sunday 19th. Yeah. So Barbados Coalition of Service Industries, BCSI, through its executive director, Michelle smith Mayers. So she'll be there as well. Thanks for that. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> No, the I just issue want to Twitter, is... but whatever. <laughs> the, the issue is F this coming out before the 19th. Good lord. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That too. So, <laughs> but yeah, Barbados content creators. You can find them on IG. Yes, yeah, so you can find it at the same thing. Barbados content creators. We host every once Sunday of the month at Aeon because it keeps it every was, one Sunday. It used to be. It used to be every last Sunday. It was like, wait, it's not anymore. I was just every one Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Except for December, because it's Christmas time and I don't want to organize stuff around then. So every month except December, one Sunday, I will post the dates on Barbados Content Creators Instagram. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Zach, thanks a lot for coming. I want to say we proud of you, dog. Yeah. We Thank proud you. of you, brother. With that being I do said, appreciate really. it. with that being said, don't do drugs. I know podcast. <laughs> we out. Thanks for watching the INO podcast, information, knowledge, observation. Be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. We'll see you soon.